Hello guys. There's this popular saying among farmers that whatever you give to the ground is what the ground will give back to you. Well, I think to a very, very large extent, that would be true in terms of quality of the materials you put in the ground, in terms of young farming, the seed you plant. But my question is, what about the size? Does the size that you put in the ground also matter? Because people say, whatever you give to the ground, it will give back to you. If I give one kg of seed or two kg of seed, I put two kg yam tuba inside the ground, will it yield something very, very large as compared to if I put 500 gram or 100 gram? That's what this video is going to be looking at today. So let's get right into it. So I decided to do this setup. I have majorly three groups of sacks that I have already filled. And they were open-ended before I loaded them. So they definitely all of them will make contact with the soil. Now I have decided I'm going to plant a particular size here, another size here, and another size there. Well, I just did a little addition. I had two extra sacks that I'm going to just, you'll see what I'll do with that. Now, why is this experiment very, very important? I want us to start looking at not just farming yams or doing, you know, commercial yam farming and all that. What is the production cost? And we know to a very large extent, I've done an analysis and I've discovered that the amount we spend buying seed is up to 40%, if not even 50% of the general production cost. So there is need for us to start cutting cost. And it starts with, what is the size of seed yam that you should plant that would definitely give you an average tuba or the tuba that you like and you make money from. Because for example, if I'm going to spend 100 Naira buying a particular seed, and that seed is going to give me almost the same tuba that the one I spent 400 Naira buying, all in the name of the size that I put in the ground room. If I compare those two tubas at the end of the day, and I realize I'm doing better with the ones that I have, you know, smaller sizes of seed, why they spend money? That is what we are going to be looking at. So I've decided to do something. Here, this is a particular seed. I've treated them all. One thing I want us to start doing is not just to look at seed and put them in the ground. What is the weight? What is the weight of the seed? So it's what we should start considering. You might say, I will I just be measuring every. You can do some form of sorting and categorize your seeds. It will help you a lot. And of course, it will help you to cut cost at the end of the day. Now, these categories, this category of seeds, they are about 170, between 170 and 190, not even up to 200. Far, they are less than 200 grams. So let's just take a, a measurement. This is my scale. Please bring the camera closer. This is my skill. And uh, just to give us an idea, this is 187. Then this is another one from that same category. This 192. So they are all, they are about five now. So I'll just go with them. And I'll, I'm going to plant them. Of course. I've already treated and like I always say, they should break dormancy. I've already broken dormancy. Now, for example, if the one I'm going to plant here now will do as good as this, you might be wondering how are we going to really know? There is an outcome parameter, outcome measure parameter that we are going to use. Uh, the experts, they call it multiplication ratio. For example, we've measured it. This one is about 170 gram. Now, if the multiplication ratio is about 10, which means what I'm expecting is going to be times 10 of this. 
let's say I'm getting 1.7 kg. And the one that I'm planting here, I'm going to show us the, um, the sizes. The one I'm planting here, I'll, I get a multiplication ratio that is more than I should be using this category. But if I get a multiplication ratio that is equivalent, I'll say fine, it matters that you should increase. But we are going to use that multiplication ratio at the end of the day to go through all sacks and now see which one has the best multiplication ratio. If I were to be a farmer, that category is the one I'm going to really, really concentrate on. So this is category number one. Let's move to category number two. Category number two is this and of course, they are breaking dormancy or they've already broken dormancy. I'll take a measurement. What's the average of this? Okay, fine. This category, we don't have anything less than. Okay, it's not less than 250. So it's between, this one is about 270 something. So that was, so it's between 250 and 300 gram, not more than 300. The, this five. Now, there's another category. This is the third category. This third category, all right, they are larger. They are, they are larger. So, let's take the measurement. Okay. This one is already smart. This is 469. This is 400. So, this category is between 400 and 500 so for this between 400 and 500 gram so right now we have less than 200 group a group b between 250 and 300 then group c is between 400 and 500 i decided to add one more although i don't have up to about five sacks and what was that one? So people normally just get this average size seat. You know, I would say average size because they will just eyeball it's like this. So look at them. Now let's look at them on the scale. What would they weigh? All right. This one is weighing, I think, okay about 749 and this one is about 819 so i would say we can categorize them they are in the same category so we are going to put those ones here now if you check all my sacks what i have ensured to try as much as possible to remove confounding factors it may not be very perfect experimental setup but to a large extent it will give us an idea of our one now the sacks they are all open-ended i try to put them in this area and the soil i use in filling the sacks they are all from the same source all from the same source and if you check the sacks that act they are actually filled to almost exactly the same level so that way Everything that has to do with bias is removed. At the end of planting, we're going to be doing the follow-up. At the end of planting, you know, doing the whole stuff, because I'm going to also stake. The staking is going to be almost the same, if I had the same length to remove any form of, you know, confounding factor of bias. I'm not an expert, but this is what I just, you know, thought of. So that to a very large extent, let's see how we can lay this whole, you know, argument to rest. Does the size really matter? Because, for example, now, if this category C and category A, they yield the same thing at the end of the day. It means because this one now is about 150 naira, 200 naira that I, that I bought this one. Then this one, obviously, because it's around the range of 400 and 
uh, 50 gram to 500 gram. This one will be going for about 400 naira minimum. And this one, let's say this one is 150 naira or 200. That difference, imagine me planting thousands of yams. It will, it will make a very, very big difference. And if I have something like this, it's going to give me what I'm going to get from this. At the end of the day, I would have wasted this material. What I would have just done would be look, get a particular size, you know, weight and cut off the other one. The remaining small one that I will cut, that I will cut off, no matter how small, I can actually make it into mini sets and get seed yams thereafter from that part that I will, I will cut off. Yam farmers, they understand it perfectly well. So this experimental setup has begun. At the end of the day, we are going to see what will become of, of it. So what we are going to be doing now is planting. Planting. And for those who don't really know how to plant yam in sacks or they have difficulty, I have uploaded videos before, but this one will give you an opportunity to still know how to plant the different type of sediums. We have various type of sediums now. So let, let's just quickly, uh, I normally like horizontal method of planting for sacks. It's just so convenient and easy. For any rookie, you don't need to, to do so much. It's not rocket science. Find the, the, the sprouting point, put it so that the head will be at the middle of the sack. If you can, no, may not always be perfect, but if you cannot, some people will say, what if I plant it slanting? It's also okay. But for me, personal experience, I prefer the horizontal because I don't want anything to obstruct the tuber that is growing down there. All right? So, done with this planting here. Let's quickly do this. Now, this one is a split uh, tuber. I, I split the tuber longitudinally so what i'm going to do most importantly is this part that should be abutting your your soil so it's as easy as that so that the sprout will come from here you shouldn't plant like this it's wrong so just do this and that's it this one is very easy the sprout is facing here this is what you do same here so all these yams have already treated with anti-fungal agent and insecticide. So group number two planted. Group three. Now you see this interesting yam is already sprouting here. So I will just lie it flat like this and it continues from that midpoint. All right, this, this one, so I'm good with this. This one is the Amorphous CDM from Milky, planted. All right, so I'm going to plant this one and they are really very, very big. Now, the reason why I, I chose to add this one under normal condition, of course, they are really, really large. But if we planted this, I want to see. This is 700 and something. Will it give me up to 7 kg? Will it give me up, up to 8 kg? So that the multiplication um, ratio will be 10, like I expect. At the end of the day, we are going to see. All right. So I'll just plant. So I'm good to go. So, guys, I'm done with this planting. The next thing will be to do my staking. And the same way, I'm just going to give one stake to each of the group so that we'll just have equal opportunities or equal chances. Well, these two, I'll just give them one stake. And the length of stake, I'll try as much as possible to make it the same. Now, we have started this experiment. It doesn't end here. We are going to be giving you updates. 
But I want to seize this opportunity to specially thank those that have been following us and have been contributing to, you know, knowledge. They've been sharing their experiences. There are a lot of you out there. You know these things far, far more than me. I'm not really your teacher. I'm just a moderator bringing up ideas. We are learning from each other. So I want to know what your comments are regarding this. Do you think that the size that we plant really, really matter? Or is there a ceiling? What I mean by a ceiling, is there an extent? The literature to a very large extent has said there is a particular ceiling from a particular um, research that was done. There's a ceiling that uh, beyond 350, the size doesn't really make any difference in the output. So we are going to see with this. Hopefully, we continue to give all of them equal treatment. And I want to also thank every one of us that have been reaching out to us. You have been using our super thanks button down there in this video to support because setting up this experiment, they are usually very, very capital intensive. I would have probably done more than five sacks to actually see, you know, the effect or so I would rather call this a pilot study. So support us with sharing our videos so that more people will get to see this and YouTube will continue to recommend it to more audience. And again, support us through our super thanks button. No matter what you give, it will go a long way to helping us move ahead. We have a lot to do this season a lot more experiments are cooking so don't go away always stay with us you will definitely get one or two things or you will contribute to knowledge thank you so much for all that you've been doing for us please watch this next video you will learn something from it god bless